All right. Um, well, we will go ahead and get started. It's past 630. Um, so uh, welcome to the Chicago Triathlon First Timers Clinic number five, um, all about the transitions. Um, it's hard to believe we are already here at uh, clinic number five. So I think we are what, just uh, a month away from um, race weekend, which is very exciting. Um, so if you, if this is your first clinic, I, my name is Gillian Faley and I am one of the coaches for the first timers, uh, program. Um, I also run an organization called live grit stores, uh, which trains youth from around Chicago to also do triathlons. Um, and uh, I've been coaching the first timers program actually from the beginning, um, you know, six, seven years ago. So um, this is always one of the most, uh, I guess, um, important clinics. And I think everybody always has a lot of questions about what to expect for during the transition. So I've done this clinic a lot, but if I miss something and, or you have a, a, you have a question that I don't hit upon, please just put it in the chat and I will periodically uh, check in on the chat and see if I can uh, and answer any of those questions and feel free to put anything, anything in there. Um, if it, even if it doesn't uh, pertain to transition. So I'm happy to answer other questions as well. Um, the only other clinic after this is going to be about race day. Um, so that will kind of tie up any of the loose ends that we have. Um, but, uh, yeah, we will just get started. So this will also be uh, recorded if you want to watch it again or a piece of it again. Um, and it's going to be posted and I will post in Facebook group. Um, you can also always email me, which I will, um, put in the chat right now, my email address. Um, if you don't have Facebook and get a copy of the um the video so um there we go all right so kicking off with transitions so transitions uh also known as the fourth sport of triathlons um so i think starting off and how i've started a lot of these clinics is uh they can be very intimidating and you can feel like you have to know so much about what to do during transition uh and, and i my goal today is to, at the end of this, you're like, Whew, I got this. That's easy enough. Um, the theme for today is going to be less is more. Um, and I will explain why here in a minute. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, so there are two different transitions. We have T1 and T2. And by two different transitions, I don't mean different places. I mean that uh, when you get your times for the triathlon, it will have a swim time. It will have a T1 time, which is the time it takes for you to go from the swim to the bike. Um, it will have a bike time. Then it will have a T2 time, which is the time it takes for you to go from the bike to the run. And then it will have your run time. And then it will have overall time. Um, and so uh, T1 is the swim to bike. T2 is the bike to run. Um, in the Chicago Triathlon, um, all of these, both of these take place in the same place. There are some triathlons where the two transitions are um, split up based on the course, but Chicago Triathlon, all three races, Super Sprint, Sprint, International, um, you're going to have one transition area that you keep coming back to. So this is the picture if you are doing the Super Sprint on Saturday, uh, the orange box here is um is where your transition area is going to be um so you're going to swim off foster beach you're going to run in from the north side um once you get out of the water then you're going to exit the transition um and go to the red part which is the bike um and then you're going to come back in and then you're going to uh exit on the southeast side for the run um, now, I, I think I've talked about this before. All of these places, the swim in, or the, you know, bike out, run out, bike in, run out, uh, 
are all going to be marked with signs and people pointing you to where to go. So you're not going to have to guess where you're supposed to go. Um, for the Sunday races, the orange uh, area up here, um, so right at Randolph in the lake, basically, is the transition area. So this is just north of the Yacht Club, um, if you've been down to the area. Um, again, same thing. Uh, you can just kind of follow the arrows to know where you're going to go. Um, the swim in is going to be on the south side of the transition area. Then you're going to bike out on the north side, bike back in on the north side, and then run out on the south side. Again, the big arches that are going to tell you exactly where to go. Um, so then let's get into the nitty gritty. So the course map for today, um, we call it grits. So we're going to talk about getting ready, um, making a checklist, rehearsing, um, initiating the plan, um, and then race day and that it's your time to shine. And I apologize. My dog is in here with me because I have a newborn baby. And, uh, so I will try to keep him from barking, um, but I apologize that he just wanted to join. So, um, so this is what we're going to be talking about today. All right, so how it works, um, and I like to show pictures because hopefully it uh, can put some context in, in your mind. So this is a, a picture of the transition of a transition area. Um, and as you can see, um, there are going to be lots of metal racks. Um, so this is not Chicago triathlon, let me be clear there. Um, but, uh, so you're going to have all of these metal bike racks, uh, that look exactly like this. And that's where you are going to rack your bike. And I'm going to show a Chicago triathlon specific picture in a minute, but I thought this was a good picture to kind of show an overview of what most transition areas look like. When you come into transition, um, you are going to rack your bike by the seat post, um, which you can see uh, in this picture. Now, if you happen to be um, so tall that your seat post does is higher than the rack, um, then you're going to rack it by your uh, handlebars. But that's kind of a specific thing. So if you have that issue, um, you feel free to email me and we can chat about it, but you're going to rack, everybody's going to rack their bike by their seat post, which is, so one wheel is going to be up and one wheel is going to be down. Um, and then, so when you come into rack, you're going to put your bike one way. The next person is actually going to alternate their bike the other way so that their front wheel is um, on the other side of the rack. So this creates more space. So we're going, you know, one wheel down on one side, the other wheel down on the other side, and you're just going to keep alternating. So when you come in, you look at if there's already a bike there, which side is their front wheel down on, and you're going to go the opposite way. Um, let's see, and I'm going to come back. Okay, I just want to make sure what picture was uh, next. So Good thing about Chicago Triathlon is, um, and being in the first timers program, is that you are going to have a dedicated rack for first timers only. Um, it's going to be in a good spot um, and it's not going to be super cramped. Um, I mean, there are going to be a lot of bikes on there because there are a lot of people in this triathlon, but you're going to have enough room um, to comfortably put your bike um, on the rack. Um, so moving on to the checklist. So this is kind of step one. Um, even before we talk about how to set up your stuff, um, you know what, let me reverse a little bit. Um, so morning, so when does transition open? How do you even get there? Um, so for the super sprint, um, so that's the Saturday race. Transition opens at uh, two different times, somewhere around 5.30 to 6.45 in the morning. You can go and start to set your stuff up. Stuff up. That's when the kids race is happening um, and they're getting their stuff ready. So it will be open until around 6.45. These times are based on last year. So they're going to be something about around that, um, but may change slightly. 
um, transition will reopen after the kids race goes at 9 a.m. and will be open from 9 a.m. to 9.45 a.m. Um, and then the race, the super sprint starts at 10 a.m. For the Sunday races, the international race goes first and then the sprint race. Um, so international last year, the transition was open from 4 a.m. to 5.45 a.m. Um, and then uh, if you're doing the sprint, you can get up and take your step there at 4 a.m. Um, or you can wait for transition to reopen uh, at, for a special time for only the sprint athletes from somewhere around 6.30 a.m. to 8 a.m. Um, so the international race starts at 6 a.m. So that's why transition closes when the race starts, uh, before the race starts, so that there's nobody like putting their bags down while people are actually racing. So um, for example, last year, the race international started at 6 a.m. The first timers went off around 7.45 a.m. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that time and what you do in, during that time a little bit later. Um, last year, the sprint race started around uh, 8.10 or a.m. or so. And the first timers went off at uh, 8.57 a.m. Um, so, um, so that's kind of, a, a timing wise to start to wrap your head around. Now for the Sunday race only, you do have an option of taking your bike, but only your bike, nothing else. You can't take bags, you can't take, you know, you can't leave your helmet there. Um, you can only take your bike. You can rack your bike Saturday from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Um, the benefit of doing this is if you don't want to travel really early in the morning with your bike for whatever reason, you know, I don't, you, you're taking an Uber or something like that, and it's just easier to get it down there on Saturday. Um, some people just like to have it there and not have to worry about it. But just remembering you can't leave anything else there, um, but you do have that option to rack your bike uh, the evening before. Um, so you're going to go into transition uh, the morning of whether you racked your bike or not. So even if you racked your bike on Saturday, you're still going to have to go to transition during that time, those time frames that I just mentioned. Um, because again, you're not, gonna have to, you're not going to have left any of your other stuff there. Um, so when you go in, what are you going to have with you? Um, and I highly recommend uh, in the next week or so that you start to make a checklist of what you need for race day. And the best way to do this is to start with what you've been training with, because um, there are very few things that you will need. Uh, if you haven't been training with it, most likely you don't need it on race day. Um, in this picture here, it is uh, on one hand shows a very minimal organized transition area. And the other side is uh, a transition area when you sit there the night before and you think about what you need and all of a sudden you are throwing in everything around your house into your bag because you have, you know, because you're like, well, maybe this is going to happen. Maybe that's going to happen. It's not going to happen. So if you're not training with it, there are a few exceptions, but you probably don't need it. Um, so this is a good sample checklist. Um, so for the swim, goggles, swim cap, whatever you're going to wear, if you're going to wear a wetsuit, um, you need that. Um, as far as the bike, uh, helmet, shoes, whatever shoes you're gonna wear, whether that's your running shoes or your bike shoes, uh, sunglasses, Shirt is on here, so that's if you are not, you know, if you're um, just wearing tri shorts um, or tri shorts and a sports bra underneath your wetsuit and you want to put a shirt on over it. Um, nutrition, socks, if you're going to wear them for the bike, for the run, again, shoes, your bib, um, sunglasses, nutrition, socks, some of the miscellaneous items that you might be, this is where, you know, maybe you don't train with an extra pair of contacts. Um, but for myself, you know, I wear contacts. I do swim in contacts. There, you know, it, there's lots of uh, differing opinions on doing that. Um, 
but I always have an extra pair of contacts at my transition area because if I don't, if I lose a contact, I am not finishing the race. Um, earplugs, an extra hair tie. I used to have long hair not that long ago, and uh, an extra because that is also pretty miserable if you break your one hair tie and then. Yeah, you have to deal with that um, and sunscreen. So this is kind of the list that we've come up with of things that you would need. Now, I, I, I should have said this at the beginning. Um, there are 50,000 different ways people will tell you uh, how to do a transition area and what you need. Um, Google transition areas and you will see, you know, on Reddit or slow twitch, 50,000 different ways and things people will say you need. This is just my opinion, um, you know, the opinion of the the other coaches that I've worked with um, to create this. Um, so, you know, if there's something that I'm missing that you're like, I really want this, I mean, that, or you see it someplace else, that's, that's totally, uh, I'm sure it's going to happen. So, um, but make this list, um, and, uh, and, and as I'm going to show in a second, when we talk about rehearsing, um, you'll be able to tell whether you have everything you need or not. Um, so, so that's where we get to the R of grit, rehearsing. Um, though I think, in, you know, we've talked about in training that you don't necessarily need to do the full triathlon altogether. Um, to be ready for race day. And, and honestly, again, so if you're training and you do want to do the full distance of the triathlon to, to help you with your just feeling more confident or whatever it is, I'd also recommend doing it not super close to race day um, because that's going to be hard on your body and you want time to recover. Um, and so I say all of that to say the one thing you do want to practice the whole thing is, uh, are your transitions? Um, because that's gonna help you with, did I forget something? Um, you know, again, just the self-confidence of this is what I'm gonna expect on race day. Um, so, so definitely make that checklist and then rehearse it. So whether that's actually during a workout or just kind of a mock, uh, you know, transition of, you know, swimming in, Okay, what would I need? Um, you know, and, and just thinking about it all the way through. But definitely use that checklist, then rehearse it. You know, at home, um, down at the beach, wherever it is. Um, so I'm gonna pause for a second, just make sure. See, uh, okay, I will uh, answer all of these questions. I just want to check what the questions were. So. Um, how does, how are we actually going to do this? Where do I set up? So like I said, there's going to be racks. Um, you're going to have a number on your bib um, that corresponds to the wave uh, for first timers. So when you go down on, on race day, and I think I actually had a picture of this um, on one of the other clinics of, there's going to be a big sign on the end of some racks that says uh, first timers program. Um, and then it's going to have some numbers and your number is going to fit within that number range. So that's the rack that you're going to rack on. Um, it will make so much sense when you get there. Um, so then we are going to rack our bike by the seat. So as you can look at this picture, you'll see that the, the nose of the seat um, is what hangs the bike on the rack. Um, and, and again, this is going to cause one wheel to be, your rear wheel is going to be in the air and your front wheel is going to be on the ground. Um, and then, and as you can, this is a much better picture. You can see the alternating of the bikes where we have one wheel up, one wheel down, one wheel up, down. You are going to set up your transition area by your front wheel. So it's going to be um, your front wheel is where your, your, your stuff's going to be, which is going to be underneath the rear wheel of your neighbor's bike. Um, most of the time we say to the left, as you will also figure out, oftentimes that just goes out the window and the way things are set up. But 
that's where you want to be next to your wheel. It'll be underneath your neighbor's wheel. Um, and, uh, and so that's what you can see here. Um, let me move to a better picture of a transition. Okay. So here is a very organized, easy, everything you need. Um, this is how I would, I personally set up my transition area. First things first, you can see they have a towel on the ground underneath their stuff. Um, they certainly make triathlon transition mats. You can again Google that if you want, um, which is just going to be a mat. Um, or I, I believe somebody had mentioned that they bought a wetsuit and it came with a mat. Um, but if you don't want to buy a mat or you didn't get a mat with your wetsuit, um, any kind of smaller towel, um, you know, you don't want a giant beach towel all spread out. You could fold it into like a quarter. Um, so, you, you know, thinking about like, you know, two and a half feet by like a foot and a half wide. Um, so kind of a, a, a not, you know, a hand towel um, and lay that on the ground. And that's what you want to put your stuff on. A couple of reasons. One, it's going to keep the stuff from getting dirty, as dirty and muddy as if you just put it straight on the ground, um, especially if it's rained and transition area is uh, wet. This is going to keep your stuff so you're not putting on a soggy helmet or anything. Um, the other thing is if you can, you know, find a, uh, a towel that is a bright orange or a bright red or whatever it is, something that you'll know, um, so if we look back on our pictures of the transition area, that's a lot of bites. So, and we're going to talk about this a little later, but you want to start having visual cues to help you find your bike. And a bright colored towel is, is a great way to do that. Um, I think back when triathlons were newer, people would tie like balloons and stuff to their bikes and to the racks. That's not allowed anymore. Um, so but you can bring on a bright colored or a pattern um, towel to help you find your bike. Um, the thing to think about when you set up your transition area is how can I set this up so I don't forget anything? Um, and that's what I think this person has done well. So come out of the swim. The first thing you're gonna need is, uh, is you're going to the bike. But I'm gonna back up for a second. So you've come in the morning of, you've racked your bike, you've set up your stuff, um, and then you're headed out to the swim. So what do you need to take with you for the swim? Um, you need to take your goggles. You need to take your swim cap. Um, you need to take your wetsuit if you're going to wear it. Um, I think, again, we've talked about in previous clinics, if you um, don't want to walk on the pavement you can bring a pair of flip-flops or sometimes it's been a little chilly in the morning a long sleeve shirt either be prepared to toss it or to put it in a, in the plastic bag that they're going to give you um which you can drop at the swim start and will end up at the finish line um a lot of people though just you know assume that it's not coming home with them and lifetime i believe donates all the stuff um that is left over um, and then you probably are also going to want to bring water and some kind of food, because as I talked about at the beginning, there is a little bit of time between when transition closes and when you start uh, the race. So you'll want to bring um, probably some water and some kind of fuel um, for that time. So that's what you've taken with you. You do your swim, you come out of the water. Remember, we've got that little bit of a run after you come out of the water and you get back to your transition area. So next is the bike. Um, that's why in this picture, the bike stuff is the first stuff this athlete is going to get to. After their bike stuff is their run stuff. So you have your helmets, um, they're wearing bike shoes. I, I believe there's some sunglasses there um, and, uh, and they have water on their bike. Um, but that's really about, and apparently they're not, I can't see socks, but like I wear socks when I ride um, and I put them in my shoe. Uh, so again, so one, I'm not trying to find them um, and I'll remember to put them on. The other thing you can see is the helmet is is not hooked, uh, so it's unhooked um, and ready to just flip right on their head. 
um, as well as the shoes, they are unhooked um, so that this person can just slide their feet in um, and go. Um, the other thing I like about this setup is you can see the helmet is kind of sandwiched between their front wheel and their shoes. Um, so that's one thing. Again, triathlons, part of the fun is that stuff always happens, but if we can minimize the stuff that happens, which specifically here I'm talking about uh, somebody coming by and accidentally kicking your helmet and can't find your helmet, or this is also why oftentimes we don't recommend you putting your helmet on like your handlebars um because lots of people are pulling their bikes out and it's you know better chance of it getting caught or something like that so having it you know sandwiched between your bike wheel and your shoes is a great way to kind of keep it in place because your helmet is the one thing that you are not going to be able to do the race without if you lose it um so so at this point, this person would have uh, taken off all their swim stuff. They're just going to leave their swim stuff by their bike. Um, I will say this is how transition areas look at the beginning of the race. It looks like a disaster at the end. There's stuff everywhere. Um, but if you try to at least put your stuff, you know, near your mat and keep it kind of close and confined, um, you're going to have a lot better chance of, of it all, you know, not having to search for things when you're done. Um, so off on the bike, they come back in, um, they find their spots. So you're going to come back to your same spots, uh, that where you wrapped your bike in the morning. So a couple tips here. We talked about the mats and a brightly colored mat. The other thing would be to start to look for, um, markers. So for example, is your bike straight across from the water table? Is your bike right next to a tree? Um, you know, counting my bike is five racks in. Um, so the morning of, and which is why I will talk about getting there early, try to figure out some way so you know the general area of where your stuff is going to be. Because um, that's just going to make it a lot easier to uh, to not spend a lot of time roaming around trying to find the numbers on your bib and match them to the sign. Uh, so finding markers early in the morning so that when you come in from your bike, you know where to go. Um, so you've come in from your bike, um, you're gonna take off all of your helmets. So the next things in line are for your run. So again, this person's wearing bike shoes. So then they have their running shoes, they have their water belt. They have a banana. Um, this is also where we've talked about, you'll have your bib. So you only have to wear the number uh, on the front of you during the run, like any kind of 5K or whatever. So um, again, we've talked about, there's a race belt, um, which I think the next picture has a picture of. Um, let's see if it does. Yes, so you can see in between the shoes is, um, so this is a different setup and I'll talk about it in a minute, but. Um, you have, this person has their, uh, race belt, um, with the number on it so they can just clip it and, and go. Um, yep. And then you see the back is the bag that they brought the stuff in. Um, so this is super easy. Everything you need right there. Um, the couple of things that aren't shown here, uh, sunscreen, um, if it's a sunny day or, or even a cloudy day, you know, having sunscreen is a great idea. Um, one of the questions that I got was when you put the sunscreen on. Um, so before the swim, put it on, if you're wearing a wetsuit, put it on before you put your wetsuit on, obviously, um, but enough time so that it can soak into the skin before you put your wetsuit on and wipe it off. So 10, 15 minutes. The good thing is, is you're going to have a lot of time before your wave goes to apply the sunscreen, let it soak in, and then put on the wetsuit. And then you can use like body glide or something like that. But if you need help, if the, you're using body glide to get the wetsuit on, uh, then it won't uh, wash it off. Um, but again, triathlons is an endurance sport. So it's also a good idea to have it in your transition area and quickly apply it. Um, you know, in during T1 and T2. Um, and uh, I know, again, this is where the everybody does it differently statement comes from. You know, I think there's, uh, you might read like people bringing buckets and things like that. 
certainly a, a thing, um, but I would not I would not recommend it. It's just going to create more of a more stuff that you don't really need. The one thing I would have is an extra water bottle um, to rinse your feet off um, or to drink either one, both. Um, but knowing that you can use it to rinse your feet off, because again, you're going to run from the swim exit to transition. And I personally don't love putting on shoes with sand on my feet. Um, again, I also, you know, there, um, there is a wide range of how long transitions take people. Um, I can't remember the exact time off the top of my head, but we, I, I watched something once with the guy that has the shortest transition ever with at the Chicago Triathlon. I think it's like a minute and something. Um, or there are people who take their time and, you know, have a 12 minute transition. So there's all kinds. So I personally take the time to rinse off my feet so that I am comfortable for the next two plus hours or whatever it is um, and not getting blisters and such. So um, this is another way that people set up transition. You know, this is kind of different. It's instead of going like front to back where we've split it in half, um, just another way, you know, this is again, you're going to see people do it all different ways. I personally like the front to back because it, I don't forget anything and uh, you just kind of clear your way through as you go. Um, let's see, let me do another um, question check real quick before we, um, some great questions. Um, and so let's see, uh, if you rack your bike on Saturday, you do not need to lock up your bike. Um, and actually, I, I don't even think you can. They will have security there. Um, so everybody's gonna get numbers. The numbers that you have, uh, that you're gonna get at the expo um, are going to match the numbers on your bike. So if you are racking your bike on Saturday, you need to go to the course talk and get all of your stuff before you rack your bike because you're because your bike needs to have its numbers on it. Um, as far as gear, you can run hats. Running hats are great. You can run in any kind of hats. Um, I, I've never seen a, a limitation on hats. So whatever it is, baseball, running, whatever it is. Um, and uh, yep, lots of questions on, um, you know, the the security um and i can't you know i don't want to be the one that says it's absolutely like yes leave everything there but i i think the thing is is you know everybody that's in transition is racing um and so you know i would obviously try to minimize the you know valuables and such that you have but um you need your house keys that, you know, having them in your bag, um, you know, I wouldn't leave anything loosely out, um, but, uh, you know, most likely I, I've never heard of anything going missing and I've been doing this for a very long time. Um, is it possible? Of course. So, you know, just kind of weighing that. Um, let's see. Uh, so, yeah, so we talked about racking. So you, you've come in from the bike. You're going to re-rack your bike the same way. Um, it's, you know, ideally, like, you want to try to get your bike going the same direction that it was before. Is it the end of the world if you come in the other direction, then your bike's facing the other way? No, as long as you're not disrupting anybody else's area, um, you're fine. Um, so don't get too worked up about that. Um, Let's see, um, you know, there, there is no, you know, things like the things being on your towel, that, that's not a rule per se, it, it's just a suggestion. You know, there are people that will just have the stuff on the ground. Um, so having the stuff on the towel, is just a helpful way to find your stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, I will come back to the rest of the questions, but I just want to keep going and then we'll we'll circle back. But I think those were some of the on point with what we're talking about right now. Um, so the rehearse part. So you've got your checklist. You know, this is what on Friday night, 
not the Friday night before the race, like this Friday night, it's going to be a fun activity. Um, so I'm sure everybody's getting up early to train on Saturday, but just set this up at home. Like get the feel for it. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it'll be a lot easier than, than it probably, you know, might sound sometimes. So then race morning, um, going, so you're, you, you've come to the, uh, you've come to the, so you've gotten there. Um, um, okay. Um, you've come, it's your time for transition. Uh, my first suggestion is to get there early. Now you don't have to get there early, you know, early in the sense of what I say, um, you know, 4 a.m. Uh, when transition is open till 545. Um, but I would certainly leave enough time that you are not rushed because if you get there uh, at 546, you are not going to be able to go into transition, which means you are not going to be able to uh, to race um, because they will have started, they're about to start the race and it's just from a safety perspective. So you don't want anything to happen when parking, you know, with however you're getting there. Um, maybe you, it's a longer walk than you thought. You just don't want those things to, to come into play. The other thing is you don't want to get in there and just have five minutes to set yourself stuff up. You know, you want to leave transition feeling comfortable about where you are, having looked at the markers. Um, so, so just making sure you err on the side of uh, earlier is better. Again, don't be there at 4 a.m., but, um, but certainly giving yourself enough time to not be rushed. Um, and then I talked about looking for landmarks. So whatever that is, you know, figure, you know, something that you're going to look for when you come in from the swim and the bike to find uh, your area. Um, and then sticking to the plan, you know, we've talked about checklists, we've talked about rehearsing it, um, not coming to race day and then deciding, this is what I talked about, you know, the night before you add 15 new things to your bag because just in case, um, uh, so stick to the plan. Um, you know, you're going to know in the next month how to do this, you know, and what this looks like for you. So just stick with your plan. Um, and then we get to, um, you know, race it, you, the actual race, you know, it's your time to shine. Um, nothing new. Again, don't come out of the swim and decide you're going to try something totally different. Uh, I can't even think of what that might be, but, um, you know, just sticking with what you know, um, what you've been practicing and what you've rehearsed at home. And then what I talked about is taking your time, um, you know, kind of weighing, the pros and cons of taking an extra 10 seconds to actually tie your shoes in the, you know, so that they're tight in the way that you like them versus, you know, just sliding them on and, you know, feeling uncomfortable for the rest of the run. Um, you know, applying sunscreen, like, yes, this is a race, but, you know, you don't want to get out on the bike and be in the sun and getting sunburned. Um, you know, so, so knowing that, yes, this is a race, but also, you know, take your time. This is also, transition is also a great time to hydrate and eat, especially if you're not super comfortable hydrating or eating on the bike. Um, taking that time before you get out there to make sure you've, you've taken something in. Um, and same thing before you go on the run. I guarantee you, you know, your time's gonna be a much faster if you are hydrated then if you try to get out on either the bike or the run, um, you know, trying to save time and, and are dehydrated. Um, so, so that's an important thing as well. And then going with the flow. I mean, you know, the, if everything goes perfectly because it's your first triathlon, that's amazing. But I guarantee you when you love this sport and you do it, uh, you know, do 15 plus more, whatever it is, um, eventually something is going to go wrong. You're going to forget something um, and you're just going to have to, or as uh, so one of the coaches uh, who now lives out in um, Washington, uh, he wore, was wearing 
wetsuit shorts um and he got on the bike he got about 10 minutes in and he just was like i am not feeling good and i am hot uh, and he looked down and he was still wearing his wetsuit shorts um it it is inevitable that you know i mean if you forget i mean take off your wetsuit totally has happened to many of us um you're in the moment um the things to remember though just always grab your helmet that is the most important thing um, before you go. So um, just trying to go with the flow and enjoying the uh, unexpected that is uh, triathlons. Um, so a couple of things as I was talking that I remembered that I forgot. Um, so for the swim, timing chip, uh, I think I've talked about this before. On, at the expo, you're going to get a timing chip, which is going to be a little round thing that going to go on a velcro band that they are going to give you um you need to have that on your ankle when the race starts so make sure you put that on the checklist um of bringing your tiny timing chip the morning of if you are wearing a wetsuit and your wetsuit is long enough you can put the wetsuit over the timing chip that also i mean it, it's very rare that they fall off so don't put that in your mind as an anxiety but if you can put your, by putting the wetsuit over the timing chip, it also helps you get the wetsuit off without having to take the timing chip off. Um, so that's one piece. The other thing that I don't think we, I talked about was uh, for the bike. Um, there's lots of questions about pumps and making sure your tires are um, aired up. So, uh, if you're not, if you don't ride a lot, um, one thing that uh, to know is that your tires lose pressure every day. So even if by touch they feel um, like they're full, uh, it is very possible that they are not uh, filled up to their recommended PSI. And the problem with that is that that is a, a you're more likely to get a flat if you're. Um, tires are underinflated. Um, so I say all this to say, make sure you pump your tires up at least the day before. So if you're racking it on Saturday, and unless there's some big um, fluctuation in temperature, you're probably going to be perfectly fine to have pumped them up on Saturday and ride on Sunday. Um, so you don't really need to worry about bringing a pump. All this to be said, though, if making sure your tires are inflated is, is something that's causing you some kind of anxiety, then bring a pump with you. Totally fine, too. I know I've said, um, you know, given uh, maybe a little cautionary, um, I guess, asterisk to bringing a pump, because if you bring a pump into transition, one, you know, be okay with uh, a lot of people using it, and two, you know, be okay that maybe at some point it... it it's going to make its way around and might not make its way back. Um, so, you know, maybe not bringing your super fancy like floor pump, uh, get, you know, a, a, there, there are a lot of less expensive, you know, just kind of uh, that you wouldn't be heartbroken if it didn't come back with you. You can also have the pump on your bike, but those are really hard to get up to full um, PSI. That is, that's a good band-aid to get you to where, you know, at last resort, I need to get through the race, hand pump, great. Um, CO2 cartridges uh, to fill up your tire, only using those if you have a flat tire and are inflating a whole new tube. Um, but again, those are all great things to have, um, you know, uh, and having a flat kit on your bike, not totally necessary, but one of two things, either uh, if you know how to, fix a flat um then having it is going to be a lot faster than waiting for bike support the other thing is uh there is bike support and and though they will have stuff um it's just always helpful if you have your own because then they can make sure you have the right tube and things um so again not a like just a helpful thing to have on your bike um let's see let me get back to the questions. I just I had some notes here, so let me make sure I um, 
I think, uh, so I, I do think there is a checklist on the Chicago Triathlon website. And I, one question was about, it says electrical tape. Um, I would have to guess that the reason why they they have electrical tape on there is because anything can happen and electrical tape fixes a lot of random things. Um, again, I would say you don't necessarily need to run out and buy electrical tape for, um, for race day, but you know, duct tape, you know, does fix a lot. I, I have seen wetsuits get ripped and, you know, duct tape, uh, to get you through the race. So my guess is that's why they had electrical tape on there, but, um, yeah. So, okay. Let me go through the questions. Um, and then we will, then I'll wrap up a little bit. Um, so one question is what do we wear on your feet as you go out for the swim? So, uh, you can either, you know, some people walk barefoot, um, and then other people, you know, will again, bring flip-flops or some kind of, you know, old shoe that again, either one, you're willing to just leave behind or two, um, you're going to put in the bag that you're going to drop at the swim start and will end up at the uh, finish line festival. So remembering, so uh, maybe I haven't talked about this. Uh, the finish line is not where the swim start is. Um, they're they're close-ish. Uh, there is a trolley that runs between the finish line and transition because after you've had a very long day, um, that might be a nice, but you can also walk it. Um, so you can drop a bag that they're going to give you at the expo. It's a clear bag and you're going to put your number on it. You can drop it at swim start and it will end up at the finish line. Um, so you could put your shoes in there. Other things, people, sometimes, you know, you might want a change of clothing, um, especially if you're doing the international. Um, there might be a, a time delay between when they reopen transition because they won't reopen transition until the last biker from the sprint is, uh, is done, um, is back in transition and out on the run. And the reason for this is because you just can't have people like crossing. So there might be a little bit of a time delay, you know, it's not gonna be super long, but they will announce like transitions open, um, but you might, you know, want to change of clothing or, you know, I don't know, things like that. Um, Camelbacks are allowed, um, and that is a good alternative uh, for water. Um, let's see. Uh, I, I do appreciate the comments. Uh, yes, if you are picking a marker and transition for how you're going to find a bike, don't pick one that moves. So don't pick a staff member. Um, you know. Others, I, I can't quite think of other things that might move, but um, that is a great point. Um, then there's a, do you um, labeling your stuff? I would certainly, it is not a bad idea to label your wetsuit and, and things that are really important that, you know, if they were to go missing, you would want them back. I did a race once and uh, in Michigan, was like three hours away after the race and realized I left my wetsuit there. Luckily, when I looked at my phone, somebody had called me and left a message because I hadn't sent my phone number. Usually they have like a place to write your name and your phone number. Um, so not a bad idea at all to label your stuff. Um, let's see. Uh, great question. So uh, you've come out of the swim. What's the deal with your wetsuit and what do you do? Um, so as we've talked about, you know, when you get out of the water, there is a little bit of a run. Um, this is a good opportunity to take your wetsuit halfway down. Um, when you get to the transition area, and I'm going to back up, see if I can find it. Um, I would say Chicago looks very similar to this. Um, and so though the bikes are close together, there is significant amount of room between the different rows of bikes. So you will have a place to, if you need to sit down, to sit down and take your wetsuit off. Um, also, you know, some tricks um, it, uh, are, you know, if you get your wet, one thing you want, if you're new to wearing a wetsuit, one thing you want to be aware of when you get your wetsuit off is that um, a lot of times, if 
you want to be careful that it doesn't start to roll on top of itself. That's how it becomes the hardest to get off. So then around your ankles, you just have this giant, you know, bunch of stuff. So I pull it down as far as possible as it will go. And then actually like step on one side and pull your leg up. And uh, so you're just pulling your leg straight out. Um, so, so, and again, if you Google that on YouTube, there's all kinds of videos as to how to get a wetsuit off. Um, but practicing getting your wetsuit off, which if you're swimming in it, you got to get it off. So, but also practicing not where you, there's a place for you to like sit down on a stair or anything, like either on the ground or standing up. Um, yep. So, uh, as you about, yeah, so Sprint has two different openings for the transition. They're going to post all of these times, but um, it reopens around 6.30, I think. Um, let's see. As far as the, the question about uh, lock laces, those are great if you're comfortable with them. So lock laces are what uh, you can put them on your running shoes, and it's just easy where you just pull them and it tightens them down. You're comfortable with them and uh, totally, again, just make sure you've practiced with them. That's gonna be a big thing sold at the expo um, by vendors. You know, if you've never used lock laces, I probably wouldn't make it the first, you know, the race day the first time you do it. Um, yeah, so after the race, um, there's gonna be a finish line festival. Um, and like I said, I. I I don't know the top, I'm, I'm not sure what time exactly transition opens back up. Um, like I said, there, there might be a little bit of lag for the international, um, but by the time you finish, you get some water, they have food, they have beer, they have vendors, you know, music, things like that. By the time you finish, you know, cool down, get something to drink, uh, and then either take the trolley or walk you know, back to transition, it's not going to be a lot of time um, that you'd have to wait. Um, so, uh, so, so that's kind of, I believe the finish line transition closes, like you need to have your stuff out um, at the latest, I, I believe it's somewhere around three o'clock. Again, all of these numbers, all these times will be exact when they come out with uh, this year's kind of like race schedule and everything. Um, but so you can't leave your stuff there overnight. You need to go back and get it uh, that day. Um, and uh, yep, so um, one question, we've talked about the race bib. So as far as numbers, you're gonna get a helmet. You're gonna, Helmet. You're going to have a swim cap that is a certain color that corresponds to the uh, first timers program. So you need that to get in the water. On your bike helmet is going to be a number. As you can see on these bikes, there are numbers on the bike. Um, and you're going to, in the packet, it will show you how to put it on. You can see some people have it around the seat post. Some people will have it around the top tube. Now, one thing to make sure of, if you put your number across the top tube, which is the, you know, kind of the highest tube of the bike, um, and you have brake cables that come out of your bike and are not in the frame, you just want to make sure that you don't put that number super tight over the brake cables um, because it's going to, it will just inhibit their getting tighter and breaking. Um, so just thinking, so making sure you look at the why, you know, the, the cables that are coming out of your bike and that you're not taping the number super tight, like over the cables. Um, and that's when like the seat post is a good way, but the, the, your packet will have all of the instructions. The other random thing that I forgot to mention is with the bike, um, you want to have your bike in a, a, a comfortable gear. So you don't want it in your the heaviest gear and you don't want it in the lightest gear. Um, when the Chicago Triathlon starts, it goes up, you go up the Randolph Street Bridge pretty quickly. Um, so it, just having it in a, you know, kind of a, a middle of the road kind of gear is a good idea. Cause if you have it super hard, it, you know, it's gonna be hard to get yourself going and super light. Like the same thing. So just making sure your gear is kind of in the middle of the road um, 
on your bike, um, at, you know, when you rack it is, is a good idea. Um, I feel that makes sense. Um, let's see. So great question about when the time starts. So um, like I talked about, you're going to get five different numbers. So swim, bike, run, T1, T2. Um, as far as T1, which is the swim to bike, it starts when you get out of the water. So the run portion is included in your T1 time. Um, and it uh, ends when you cross. So I think at the, during the bike clinic, we talked about there's what's called the mount line. So you, you're going to grab your bike. You're going to go to where it says bike out, walking, walking, running it, whatever it is, not riding it. Um, and you're, there's going to be a mount line that you have to cross. And once you cross that line where there's going to be tons of volunteers telling you to, you know, don't get on your bike till you cross the line. Um, once you cross that line, there's going to be another timing mat and that's where the bike will start. Um, and so then that would be T1 out of the water to getting on your bike across the mount line. T2 is once you cross back over the dismount line. Um, so you have to get off your bike before for the dismount line. Again, people will be telling you exactly what to do. Uh, and then that time ends when you cross over another timing mat out on the other side when you start the run course. Um, so that's what those times will be. Um, and so uh, I've talked about the packet. Packet pickup um, is, and I think it's, I think these times are actually listed Friday. So it's at the Hilton. Um, so if you're doing the super sprint or any of the Sunday races, pick it up on Friday. If you're doing the super sprint. You can also pick it up the morning of only for the super sprint. Uh, and that's at Foster Beach. Um, for Sunday's races, you can do it Friday or Saturday at the Hilton. Um, and the times are listed online. In order to get your packet, you have to go to a course talk where they will go through every, you know, most, all the all the rules you need to know, probably more in depth than we have in these clinics. Um, and it'll be very helpful, but you have to go to one of those to get your packet. They'll give you a wristband. I believe there usually is one also, or a couple the week uh, before at like different locations. Um, so just be on the lookout for that. Um, um, so there's questions about a shorty wetsuit and the ease. Of it, I mean that again. Um, so a shorty wetsuit, you know, might be either like short sleeves and short, um, like shorts. Um, it's just a different version. There's all the, there's long sleeve wetsuits. There's sleeveless with long leg wetsuits. There's shorties. That's really I, I. There's not one that I recommend over another. I personally swim in a long sleeved long leg wetsuit, um, and uh, and so that's um, so. Uh, it's all about just practicing with what you're going to race with um, so that if you are wearing a long sleeve wetsuit, you're super comfortable just getting it off and you know how to that happens. So uh, again, thinking about this is an endurance. So we're talking, uh, you know, a long distance of time and that's, yeah, you know, obviously we want, you know, to go as fast as we want and, you know, but I like to balance this with how comfortable we are and how much fun we're having. So a couple extra, you know, 45 seconds is not going to be the end of the world if if what you're more comfortable in is a, is one kind of wetsuit over another or something like that. Um, let's see. Uh, so this, so I, I, okay, yeah. So if you've been going to the swim clinics, I think there was one last night. Um, I saw the pictures and it looked amazing. Um, you, there'll be a course sock, I, I believe, on the last one, um, and that's your course sock. So then you don't have to go to another course sock, but you still have to go to the Hilton and get your packet. They're just going to give you a wristband that day that says, I went to a course sock, but you still have to go to the Hilton to get your packet, unless you're doing the super sprint, and then you can get it at Foster Beach. Um, the super sprint does not, you. it is not mandatory that you um, go to one of the course talks. They will do a course talk before the super sprint um, if you're picking it up the Saturday morning. Um, but 
there are super sprint specific course talks if you want that extra peace of mind um, at the Hilton, I believe on Friday. Um, so whew, let's see what else. Um, I'll just do one more over. Um, one question I think I've mentioned, but I'll, I'll hit upon again is that, um, you know, most likely, I, I, you can wear you're going to be able to wear a wetsuit there are certain temperatures that they either are mandatory so if it's under 60.6 degrees wetsuits are mandatory never seen that happen at chicago doesn't mean it can't but never seen it happen um if it's under 78 degrees they're allowed if the water is and i'm talking water temperature here um if the water temperature is above 78.1 degrees they are not allowed again never seen that happen um so it shouldn't be an issue but i just wanted to that there are rules around that and that's a question that comes up a lot um let's see any other last minute questions anything i missed um if i missed something um and i don't think i answered this one but so as far as the bib that you have to have on your front during the run you can absolutely wear it on the bike there is no rule against that and if that's what you are comfortable with you can put it on whatever you're going to wear on the bike and that is totally fine the only reason why we sometimes talk about you know the race well why we talk about the race belt and such is it's just to minimize like the flapping and the wind and stuff but it's not it, it's not going to be some huge like issue or anything like that so um, you can definitely wear the bib uh you just want to make sure that you're not sitting during transition trying to safety pin the bib um so whether if you're going to safety pin it onto your shirt do it for the bike the night before or, and uh yeah so um let's see uh i think i hit upon but if i missed any questions recopy it um but so our last clinic um, is going to be in three weeks uh, on the Wednesday, same thing. And that's just gonna be, you know, so any last minute questions, feel free to email me with your questions. I put my email in the chat, but I'm gonna do it one more time because I think if you were not here, uh, then it didn't go. Um, feel free to email me with any questions or put them in the Facebook group. Um, and yeah, that last clinic is just going to be like tying up any loose ends and answering any questions. Um, we'll talk a little bit about nutrition. Um, and yeah, we'll go from there. So awesome. Well, I hope everybody has a good rest of their Wednesday and we'll see everybody in a couple of weeks.